recording. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. This is Stuart B. Fields, B for Bravo. Bravo for being here with Increase Your Awareness, Expand Your Potential. This, I'm so excited today. This is the first in a series of videos I'd like to share with you, the viewing audience. You might be listening to this on a podcast or on a YouTube channel. Um, click below if you'd like to subscribe. And I am here with Heather Dean. She is an educational consultant with Creative Across the Cultures, uh, Creative Across the Curriculum, I'm sorry. She is a fellow member of Madison Area Business Consultants and a friend and a colleague. I've invited her here to open the program. Recently, I attended, uh, actually, Heather, could I have you introduce yourself? Sure, sure. Hi, thanks, Stuart, for having me. Uh, again, Heather Dean with Creative Across the Curriculum. I'm an educational consultant, and I help educators and leaders better engage their students, their clients, their teams by improving their curriculum design. So a creative curriculum allows the learner to really engage with the content in a deeper way, and it creates a long-term impact uh, and personal self satisfaction, which would then lead to professional satisfaction. So awesome. I am thrilled to be here. I got to present at MABC with Stuart, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about just step one today of yeah. how you can engage your audience and really tweak your programming to get better impact. Perfect. Thank you so much. And thanks again for agreeing to be here, Heather. One of the things that I had noticed in your presentation earlier this month is there was a component where you talked about the brain and you had us work through a way that we could not only see what you're doing with making a curriculum and, and a training program more robust and, and more transferable into workplace skills, and that's really what we're after, but you walked us through the process while showing us a visual and you engaged us in what you were sharing. And I just thought that was really remarkable in a great way. And it, True to the title of increasing your awareness and expanding your potential, whatever you are, wherever you are in the world, it is important that you become more aware of your general surroundings and expand who you can be to become your best self. And, and that's why I'm doing this. I, I wish the best for you. And with that, Heather, I'm going to ask you to share your screen and you can take us into that concept and that component of your training program that I saw that I really enjoyed. So. Let's see bottom of the screen. Oh, How are you awesome. doing there? You got you it? Are doing perfect. I can see both of us. I can see you and I can see tweaking the client process. So talk us through this and I will be your, your audience and your model and follow along. If you're sitting at home and watching this, one of the viewers, you're welcome to follow along as well. Heather does a great job. Yeah, well, thanks again. This is exciting to activate our whole brain. Uh, the goal will be for today, this is just step one in trying to tweak the client experience, uh, to analyze the parts of your brain. You see we've got five shaded areas here in different colors. And the purpose uh, in each of those areas of the brain when you're learning something new. And then once you've learned all these parts of the brain and what they're used for, we would love for you to analyze your curriculum and see if there's room for improvement, what you could tweak and change in your programming uh, to activate that whole brain. So Stuart, if you'll be my guinea pig, are you ready to go and activate I, your whole brain? I am ready to go. And as we had talked earlier, maybe we can put that on laser pointer. So slide oh, your... Yes. Your cursor over. Oh, you, you've got it. Your laser is already engaged. Super. Thank you. I'm right here. And speaking of engaging your laser pointer, let's engage your brain here. So down in this bottom uh, area here when sh shaded red and my pointer is heading in that direction is your cerebellum and that's way in the back of your brain. So sort of you'll tap your brain and those of you watching at home, tap the back of your brain and say with me cerebellum. 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 Right. Your cerebellum controls your coordinated muscle movements. So you would still be able to move your muscles if you didn't have your cerebellum activated, but you wouldn't be coordinated. So uh, we are going to do a little movement here and we're gonna coordinate our muscles by showing a muscle on this arm, a muscle on this arm, and then we're gonna clap and get our fingers intertwined together while we say cerebellum. So I'll model for you and then you can do it, then we'll do it together. So you're going to tap the back of your brain and say cerebellum. Cerebellum. And then you're going to say cerebellum and clap your hands together. Okay, right? let me One, try that. One, two, three. Cerebellum. Cere cerebellum. Clap. 
There you go. Oh. And you want to try and coordinate those muscles, right? To get those fingers in together. So that's the first area of the brain that we're going to talk about is that cerebellum. And basically coordinated muscle movement is important to have in the client process. You want your clients moving. We're going to move on to the occipital part of the brain. And that's this dark blue area here, if you look at my laser pointer. And we're going to tap a little above the cerebellum, the back of the brain. And this is your occipital lobe. So everybody say occipital. Occipital. Great. And the occipital is your visual input. So that's why when you have a presentation, it helps to have a picture of the brain in front of us so that we are getting visual input. So everybody's going to tap the back of their brain and say occipital. And then you're going to give me snake eyes. I'm going to look at you, Stuart, and you're going to look at me and give me snake eyes. Perfect. So let's hear you try it. Occipital and snake eyes. Occipital. Yeah, that's your visual input. Great. So we got two parts of the brain. Next, we're going to go up here to this green area, which is your parietal lobe, and that's on either side of your brain on the top. So we're going to put our hands up here and say parietal. Parietal. Yeah, your parietal has three main functions in a learning experience. It's going to be putting order of events, the items in sequence that they need to occur in. It's going to control where you are in space, so your body understanding where you are within the side of the table or the chair or where the wall is. So knowing where you are in space. And it's also your sense of touch. So for parietal, this one has three movements in here. We're going to do um, sequence of events, putting items in order. And that's going to look like this. One, two, three, because that would be order, putting things in order. Then we're going to kind of tickle out the side of where we are in space for three, and then at the end, we're gonna touch our own hands for a sense of touch. So I'll model for you, it'll be parietal, and then you'll say one, two, three. You give it a shot, Stuart. <laughs> no, it's a lot to recall, let's see if we can do that. So parietal. One. One. Two. Well, on top of each other. So, so look, this, well, this, is, this, is, this is challenging, let's try it again. So Good. parietal. Parietal. One, One, two, two three. three. Good. So putting items in order, where you are in space, and your sense of touch. So in order, where you are in space, and your sense of touch. Correct. Wonderful. Thank you. Nice work. All right. So interesting, uh, Stuart, you modeled for me this next area that uh, is typically tapped in a learning experience. And this is your temporal lobe, and it's connected with memory, long-term, short-term, and active working memory. And so when you said, oh, wait a minute, I can't remember the order, that was actually tapping into your temporal lobe. So we're going to find our temples right here on the side. And okay. uh, your temporal lobe is going to go on either side of your brain, and it's going to be your memory. So when you rub your temple, say, hmm, I can't mm. remember. Mm, I can't remember. And which part of the brain is this? Temporal. Your temporal. So think yeah. temples and your temporal lobes that go on either side. So that's your memory. All right, so if we look at these four parts of the brain, that's almost half of the brain, or maybe two-thirds, I would say, of your brain. And it's really important to tap these four areas. The problem is, is a lot of times when we're doing a learning experience, we forget this whole huge big purple area. And this is one of the most important areas to tap if you want to have deep understanding, long-term understanding, and if you want to have professional or personal self-satisfaction in the learning experience. And this is your frontal lobe, and it's right up here. So we're going to kind of tap lightly the front of our brain and say frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. Now the frontal lobe is where all your higher order thinking is going to happen. Your creative problem solving, your critical thinking, your, uh, your wondering, like, hmm, I wonder what if. What if we took this piece out and we put this one in? All of those uh, deep thoughts that really there is not necessarily one right answer to happens in that temporal lobe. So we're going to tap the front of our brain and we're going to say eureka as like the aha moment. That's that frontal lobe. You want your learners to be able to have a eureka moment. So, so Stuart, you, let's hear frontal lobe. Frontal lobe. And eureka. 
Eureka, wonderful. So a typical learning experiences tend to leave this out, believe it or not, this whole part of the brain. Uh, they want us to memorize the order of events and they maybe give us a visual or a chart or something to help that occipital lobe. Maybe they get us up and moving our bodies, but they don't actually let the learner create. And that's up here in this purple lobe. And that's what I help educators and leaders uh, do is to tweak their curriculum so that they can tap into the whole brain rather than just this back two thirds. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Heather. This is very interesting. And I know that as a facilitator, it's important that whatever programs that I'm delivering have different components built into them so that the learner walks away with a true experience that they can incorporate into whatever skills that they'd like to develop. And yeah. one way that I looked at it in the past was that the different uh, learning approaches or, or modalities where people are either a visual learner or a kinesthetic learner or uh, a, an auditory learner, and therefore you try to incorporate a, a matter of some lectures, some visuals, and, and some movements to incorporate that uh, into the, your, your training and, and help it stick, if you will. I but this explains nice it, right? That's <laughs> perhaps that's a nice video. But for, for now, I think this is great. I'm going to bring this to a close and just share that for viewers looking at this on YouTube, you'll find a link down below that will lead you both to Heather's website for more information and to my website as well. And I encourage you to subscribe. If you're listening to this on podcast, I will do the same. And for everyone out there, I just encourage you to continue to increase your awareness, expand your potential, and do good for others. Thank you so much. Thanks and thank you. You, you are so welcome.